The video you're about to see addresses the containment of leaks that possibly could occur in chlorine tank cars and tank trucks. While leaks in these tanks rarely occur, prompt corrective action by trained personnel using special equipment is required. The Chlorine Institute Emergency Kit C featured in this video contains the latest approved additions and revisions contained in Edition 10. The information in this video is drawn from sources believed to be reliable. Users must be aware that changing technology may require a change in the equipment or the instructions concerning their use. Appropriate steps should be taken to ensure that the material is current when used. The Chlorine Institute website can be consulted to verify that the most current information is being utilized. All transportation releases, no matter the quantity, require reporting to the DOT. Basically, if you can see it, smell it, or hear it during transportation function, it's a non-accident release, or NAR, and requires reporting to DOT. Chlorine emergency should be handled by your trained on-site personnel. Regardless of the quantity released, any problems or releases involving chlorine should be reported to your supplier. They can offer valuable advice and assistance in handling a chlorine emergency. If the supplier cannot be reached or respond immediately, get help by activating Chlorap, the Chlorine Emergency Plan. Call the dispatch agencies for assistance, Chemtrek in the United States and Canutech in Canada. Before any attempt is made to find and correct leaks, personnel must be fully trained in the proper use of the tools and devices of this kit. This training must also include a knowledge of chlorine and its properties, the proper respiratory protection to use, and the proper protective clothing to use with chlorine. The Chlorine Institute Kit C is designed for use on any DOT-approved chlorine tank car or cargo tank and DOT-51 portable tanks in chlorine service only, as shown on screen. Most chlorine leaks involve one of the four to five valves inside the tank car or tank truck's protective housing cover. These valves are located in the same position on both tank cars and tank trucks. The two liquid angle valves are always parallel to the length of the tank car or tank truck, while the one or two vapor valves are always transverse to the length of the tank car or tank truck. The pressure relief device will either be located in the center or opposite the vapor valve when only one vapor valve is installed. The kit contains special wrenches to ensure safe chlorine valve operation and application of the kit devices. Use only these wrenches on specified fasteners as instructed in this video. Additional tools may be required for newer valve arrangement as demonstrated in this video and outlined in the Kit C instructional booklet. Leaks should be handled only by trained and properly protected workers. They should work in pairs. Leaks can be found using 10 to 30 percent ammonia solution vapors from a squeeze bottle. A white cloud will form if chlorine is present. Do not squirt liquid aqua ammonia directly on the chlorine connections. Kit C contains the tools and devices designed to contain leaks that may occur in and around the tank angle valves, pressure relief device, and in the pressure plate. Emergency responders should be aware there are other types of angle valves used on chlorine tank cars and tank trucks in which the procedures for stopping a leak may be different. However, device 6 or device 24 can be used to contain any angle valve leak. Leaks on a traditional Chlorine Institute 1 inch angle valve can occur around a packing gland, through a valve seat, at the valve flange gasket, and the valve outlet flange, if so equipped to stop a leak in the valve packing. Close the valve by hand. If additional force is required, use the spanner device 216 with wrench socket 113 and wrench bar 113C. Tighten the packing gland nuts with wrench 110. Make sure each nut is tightened equally. Test for leaks. 
If the leak continues, apply device 6 or device 24, depending on the angle valve style. To stop a leak through the valve seat, insert the valve outlet plug using wrench 218. Open and close the valve repeatedly by hand or with the hand wheel spanner device 216. This may remove any foreign material from the stem or seat by the movement of the seats in contact with each other, allowing the valve to seat firmly. If the packing leak has stopped, verify the valve seat is not leaking by carefully removing the outlet plug to vent potential chlorine vapor. After the valve cavity is cleared of trapped chlorine, test for leaks with ammonia around the valve outlet. To tighten the packing on newer style valves, follow the manufacturer's instructions. If the leak continues, apply device 6 or device 24, depending on the angle valve style. To stop a leak at the angle valve flange gasket, tighten the stud nuts in an alternating pattern using wrench 112 and wrench bar 113C. Test for leaks. If the leak continues, apply device 6 or device 24, depending on the angle valve style. Device 6 can be used to contain all leaks in and around the angle valve, including those previously identified. To apply device 6, remove the outlet cap from the vent valve 6V on the hood 6A1 and open the valve. This eliminates a pressure buildup inside the hood as it's being installed. Disconnect any piping if the leaking angle valve is connected or unscrew the valve outlet plug. Place the outlet plug against the packing gland. If the plug chain or cable is in the way of the hood, cut it off with bolt cutter C3. Clean the pressure plate. Use the paint scraper C2 if the paint is loose or uneven. The cleaner this surface is, the more likely a good seal will occur with the hood to contain the leak. To install the device over some of the newer dual valve cars, an additional step is required. Loosen and remove the three cap screws securing the valve outlet flange to the valve body. A one inch threaded stabber pipe needs to be inserted through the housing port near the leaking valve. Thread the pipe securely into the valve outlet flange. Tap the stabber pipe on the sides with a hammer until the valve outlet flange is loosened. Remove the stabber pipe with the outlet flange attached. Hood 6A1 cannot be used on these valves. Instead, hood 24A1 must be used. Place gasket 6BMV on hood 6A1. When ambient temperatures are low, it is desirable to perform this task in advance, preferably in a heated area. Also, the bottom edge of the hood should be smooth. Nicks, cuts, or an uneven edge can prevent the hood from sealing against the pressure plate. Place hood 6A1 with the gasket 6BMV over the leaking valve. Do not obstruct hood vent valve outlet as access may be required later. Place the yoke assembly 11A hooks into the port openings of the protective housing or to the mounting bars inside the housing if provided. Center screw 11C over the hood 6A1. Tighten screw 11C forcing hood 6A1 and gasket 6BMV against the pressure plate. In an alternating pattern, tighten the four screws 11E in block 11B using wrench 200C, forcing hood 6A1 and gasket 6BMV against the pressure plate. Caution! Tighten only enough to stop the leak. Over-tightening may cut the gasket. Close vent valve 6V on the hood 6A1 using wrench 200C. Replace the vent valve 6V outlet cap. Test for leaks immediately after installation and at regular intervals if the capping is to be kept in place for an extended period. Most of the kit relaxation will occur in the first hour after installation. Tighten as required to maintain original kit seal. Leaks at the pressure relief device can occur inside the pressure relief device and at the pressure relief device gasket. In the protective housing, the pressure relief device usually has a dust cap on it. 
If the dust cap is not on the pressure relief device, that could be a sign that it functioned as designed, relieving the pressure on an overpressurized car. Before installing a C-kit on a pressure relief device, it is important to make sure the pressure relief device is indeed leaking. Do not install a C-kit device on a pressure relief device that is functioning as designed, that is, relieving pressure on an overpressurized tank car or tank truck. From the top view, the pressure relief device looks different from the other angle valves because it does not have a hand wheel on it. This is a side view. The pressure relief device is spring-loaded to only open in overpressure situations. In overpressure situations, it is functioning as designed and the C-kit should not be applied. Check the pressure using the car vapor valve if possible. To stop a leak at the pressure relief device gasket, tighten the stud nuts in an alternating pattern using wrench 112 and wrench bar 113C. Test for leaks. If the leak continues, Apply Device 24. To stop a leak inside the pressure relief device, apply Device 24. Device 24 can be used to contain all leaks in and around the pressure relief device, including those previously identified. Always verify the pressure in the car before applying Device 24. Remove the outlet cap from the vent valve 24V on hood 24A1 and open the valve. If necessary, remove uneven or loose paint on the pressure plate using Paint Scraper C2. Place gasket 24BMV on hood 24A1. Note, when ambient temperatures are low, it is desirable to perform this task in advance, preferably in a heated area. Also, the bottom edge of the hood should be smooth. Nicks, cuts, or an uneven edge can prevent the hood from sealing against the pressure plate. Place hood 24A1 with gasket 24BMV over the leaking pressure relief device. Do not obstruct hood vent valve outlet as access may be required later. Place the yoke assembly 11A hooks into the port openings of the protective housing or mounting bars in the protective housing if so equipped. Center screw 11C over hood 24A1 and tighten screw 11C forcing hood 24A1 and gasket 24BMV against the pressure plate. In an alternating pattern, tighten screws 11E in block 11B using wrench 200C, forcing hood 24A1 and gasket 24BMV against the pressure plate. Caution, tighten only enough to stop the leak. Over tightening may cut the gasket. Close the vent valve 24V on hood 24A1 using wrench 200C. Replace the vent valve 24V outlet cap. Test for leaks immediately after installation and at regular intervals if the capping is to be kept in place for an extended period. To stop a leak at the pressure plate gasket, immediately report the leak to the chlorine supplier. It is not advisable for persons to handle this condition without special training. Tighten the pressure plate stud nuts in an alternating pattern using wrench socket 113, wrench extension 113A, wrench bar adapter 113B, and wrench bar 113C. Test for leaks. All parts of the chlorine emergency kit C should be maintained in a ready to use condition. After every use, inspect all parts for damage, wear, and corrosion. Clean and thoroughly dry all parts used. Lubricate all movable parts with a non-reactive lubricant. Replace all gaskets used with new ones. All Viton gaskets are stamped with the date of manufacture and should be removed from emergency use after a four-year shelf life. For further guidelines concerning the Viton gaskets, consult Indian Springs Manufacturing or the Chlorine Institute. Spare parts may be purchased by owners of Kit C from Indian Springs Manufacturing. For information on ordering, consult the manufacturer or the Chlorine Institute. The kit should be frequently inspected by the person responsible for the equipment. 
The kit contents should be checked against the parts list found in the Kit C instruction booklet to ensure that all the items are present and ready for use. The box should be sealed after each inspection and these seals should be broken only by authorized persons or in case of an emergency. Many users coordinate the routine inspection with training drills. To maximize the effectiveness of this emergency kit, be sure that it's located in an area that provides easy access in an emergency, but offers protection from the weather. You cannot use it if you cannot get to it. During an emergency, Responders may first investigate the scene in the appropriate PPE to identify the leak source with ammonia vapor prior to accessing emergency kit devices. Keep in mind that PPE such as SCBA affects your physical capability and the amount of response time. A plan then should be established to move the necessary pieces from the kit to address the leak, keeping in mind PPE restrictions and response time. In review, Kit C is designed for use with approved chlorine tank car and tank truck valves only. Personnel must be trained in the use of the devices and tools of Kit C, the use of proper protective equipment, and of chlorine and its properties. If a chlorine leak occurs, contact your supplier immediately. If further assistance is needed, activate Chlorep through Chemtrack in the United States or Canutech in Canada. Always work in pairs and under control. Work to do it right the first time. When applying the devices, use only the wrenches supplied with the kit on the traditional valve arrangement. Additional tools may be required for newer valve arrangements as demonstrated in this video and outlined in the C-Kit instructional booklet where applicable. Always test for leaks after applying any kit device. Make arrangements to properly dispose of any remaining chlorine. Clean, dry, and lubricate all movable parts with a non-reactive, fully halogenated lubricant after each use. Install only new gaskets and replace gaskets that have been in storage for more than four years. Establish a regular routine for inspecting your kit to ensure that all the contents are ready for use. Finally, it's better to prevent leaks than having to stop them. Kit owners should also be aware that several enhancements have been made to the Emergency Kit C, the latest being Edition 10. All emergency kits should be maintained in complete and up-to-date condition. For information concerning kit enhancements or for replacement parts, please contact Indian Springs Manufacturing. Additional information concerning chlorine and its properties, emergency procedures, and personal protective equipment can be found in the publications available from the Chlorine Institute. For further information, please contact the Chlorine Institute.